Hey everyone, welcome to the Idiomatic Top 3! With Nicholas, I am the gaming correspondent for uh, Idiomatic. That was really short. Um, <laughs> I'm Pam. I have way too much time to think about stuff that doesn't mean anything. Um, Nick, I advise you to put your pants back on because clearly you're distracting Pamela. It was a joke about it being short. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Alright. And I am Dimitri, editor in chief of Idiomatic and makers of raunchy little comments and also movie critic. And, uh, well, first of all, welcome, Pam. It's your first uh, recording with us. I know, you've been badgering me for years. I have. Uh, but uh, it, maybe I asked you twice about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, today, to get you all warmed up, we thought we'd start with a really accessible topic. Accessible. Accessible. Mm -hmm. Like a ram. Our individual top three th things we can't believe we used to like. Uh, why don't you get us started, Pam? Great, put me on the spot. Yes. Uh, well, let, let's do this in chronological order then, shall we? It is tragic that I used to like Three's Company. Your number three is Three's Company. Three's Company, yes. I, I, I see why they made the show in the first place. The idea of a man living with two women in a platonic relationship, absolutely shocking. But then why did they have to make him a horn dog? I used to watch it all the time mm -hmm. uh, in syndication when I was a kid. Like, it was like 5 p.m. I'm not that old, sweetie. I had to watch it in syndication too. <laughs> Alright. Alright. And. <laughs> Never mentioned anything, but okay. <laughs> you did! You said it's because I'm old! <laughs> but I, I, I used to love it as a kid, though. Mm -hmm. I used to watch it all the time and thought John Ritter is so funny. And I, I, I still think he's funny. Well, less so since he's dead, but. <laughs> oh. Thankfully. I went there. But yeah, it, it, they're passing now again in like some of the specialty networks mm -hmm. on television. And, Wow, none of it is remotely funny. No, no. Suzanne Summers can't act. She can only hawk diet products. There's also, you know, because we have sort of evolved the, the whole, like, he must pass for gay, and, and whenever the landlord shows up, he must act gay thing is so uncomfortable in today's context. It's a little bit outdated, it's true. Yeah. The landlords themselves were absolutely pathetic. Mr. Farley, the dirty old man, and Mr. and Mrs. Roper. Yeah, which well, had their own own spinoff eventually as well. Did they really? Yeah, it That's lasted wrong. like something like seven episodes. Not great. Well, nice. Most spinoffs don't last much more than seven episodes. Mm -hmm. Fraser maybe being the only stellar exception. Yeah, it, what, did it go ten years? Ten years or something like that, yeah. That means Kelsey Grammer has played Fraser for like 20 years. It's sad. It probably means that Fraser has more of a personality than Kelsey Grammer does. Oh, no. Have you read his Wikipedia entry? <laughs> I do not think so. <laughs> The man has lived. Actually, uh, listeners, while you're listening to this, if you're surfing the web, take the time. Type Kelsey Grammer on Wikipedia and read the funkiest Wikipedia entry so far. It is so weird. Full of intrigue, murder, and battery, and odd little details, such as somebody being murdered next to a red lobster, as if that part was important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next, number three. Number three. Great show I used to love, and now you watch it, and I was like, this is so Sweet, it's just sickening. Full House. Ugh. I used to love that as a kid. Yeah. I can't say that I liked it at all. And, you know, you thought it was funny too, or Bob Saget's hilarious for some reason. No. And now you're like, oh, this, this is just bad. None of them have proper comedic timing. It's just, they, they just throw jokes and uh, maybe that maybe they'll be funny. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's horrible. Well, the thing about it is, is that a lot of the jokes are geared towards getting a reaction from the children, and since the children are, you know, they're too young to be proper actors, oh. per se, certainly in that context, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that we don't have great child actors. Or that children alive, need or... to be pandered to. Yeah, true. Yeah. But, like, I mean, they're, they're trying to get a reaction from the children actors, so that they can have a cute reaction to whatever Uncle Joey or Uncle makes really bad imitations mm -hmm. uh, does. <laughs> I don't even remember his name. Dave Couillet was the actor, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Jesse, I think. No, Uncle Joey is. Uh, yeah, Joey is the 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 the, the bad the, the bad, bad comedic actor. Oh, okay. Jesse. The Uncle Jesse yeah. is John Stamos. Okay. Yeah. The only reason I watched it because John Stamos was hot, and I say was because now I don't think I agree. Yeah, I mean John Stamos. Let's face it. For a lot of us, he's a god. He married a Rebecca Romaine for a while. He did. Yeah. He did. And lived in Disney World with her. I mean, they lived on. in Disney World. Yeah, they lived I in Disney no World. I had no idea. Yeah. Wow. 
I wonder if he's still drumming for the Beach Boys. Yeah, he is actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. But uh, all that being said, my focus was all on DJ back in the day. Candace Cameron. Candace Cameron. I had the biggest crush on Candace Cameron. I used to daydream that I would start my own show that was like half improv and half scripted, and she and I would be <laughs> in it and would be awesome together. As... No, I'm fairly certain Kurt Cameron would never let that happen. Yeah, he's one of those super conservative Uber Christian Super, oh, like, yeah, guys. Uber Christian. Blah. <laughs> Makes my skin crawl. Next. <laughs> but, uh, and I used you... to like him too. Hmm? Nah, I mean, the, the important thing about the comedy is really it has to be funny. And when you rewatch it and you, the jokes don't work and they're, they're just relying on, you know, cuteness to be funny, and I don't know how that works exactly now, uh, it, it just fails completely as a show, really. Nothing to hold it together. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. And it's weird also because they put all the emphasis on uh, the Olsen twins playing uh, the youngest daughter. And, you know, they were pretty awful. <clears throat> already dreaming of corporate takeovers with their fashion industry instead of focusing on the acting yeah and it, it occurs to me when i watched it again is that the middle girl i don't know what her name is was actually the best young actress in the bunch she actually had some potential and she never went anywhere it's... No. didn't she end up drug addicted oh did she i think so oh, i seem to remember you know what happened to them kind of episode and yeah i think she did wow well, that's what happens you got to give yourself the craft right and when you did at a young age what do you do yeah no, it's middle child syndrome. That's what the problem is. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My number three. I'm going to the movies instead of TV shows. And I am going with a 1987 movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm talking about Predator. Only saw it once. Didn't enjoy it then. No? No. no. See, I'm not surprised. Most, most guys love that movie. You mm -hmm. know, if, you, if we had Frank and Chris and Eric... Over, they'd be like Frank in particular would be like, "How dare you? A predator was amazing." And it's no, like it was ridiculous. Sorry. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> and Dennis certainly. I actually literally had that fight with Dennis, and, and I mean literal fight. There was kung fu dropping kicks and all that. I wish I'd seen it. <clears throat> and uh, well, yeah, but it didn't make a good podcast recording for some reason. So. <laughs> I'm not a good Swalk. play. By, I'm not a good play-by-play -play guy, Boring. so it's like. No, no, you just need the old Batman and Robin sound effects to go along with it, and then at least we'd have an idea of what was going on. You realize that's just a trumpet sound. The the, the sound effects were actual visuals. That's true. I forgot that part. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's your first time. You get one. <laughs> one. Good thing that the audience can't see what I'm doing. Right? <laughs> She is pointing the middle finger at Dimitri. <laughs> Thank you for stating the obvious, Mr. Roulette. Move on. Also, she's raising it, not pointing it. So. There you go. <laughs> That's why I said I'm bad at play-by-play. -play. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't surprise me that you wouldn't like Predator the first time around because it is so sexist. Like, back in the 80s, bigger than life, 80s must be macho, man. And I was just an impressional kid, and, like, none of that really registered. Mm -hmm. it's, I was too young to really care about feminism and all of that stuff. And it was just some kick-ass dudes doing kick-ass things and fighting an evil alien. Yeah. But, like, when you watch it again, like, and you look at the, the power dynamics, the idea that, like, oh, you're a woman, you shouldn't hold a gun. It's like, seriously? Like... Seriously, 1987, you're a woman, you shouldn't hold a gun? That passes in mainstream entertainment? That's crazy. I, know, I thought they didn't give her a gun so she, she would have her life safe because, you know, the predator was a hunter and if she wasn't armed, she wouldn't be a valuable prey. <clears throat> yeah, that's even, eventually their argument, but why are the other men not worth saving? It's like, oh, you're a man, you can hold a weapon. Yeah, because they have to fight the Predator, because they're men. <laughs> exactly. It's just so <laughs> I'm not even going to enter this conversation. I don't think but it's worth it. I, I don't mind the sexism, really. I think it's it's product of its time. It's fine. The real problem I have with it, it's, it's a small problem, is that the action is not that great. It has action in it, but compared to other movies, that, that you can do better, really. Oh, come on, really? Shooting at, 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 at trees with nothing going on, that, that does not get your rocks off? It, you know, shooting guns, it, it might have been exciting. Like you said, when we were younger, oh, they're shooting machine guns. This is awesome. Mm. It's like, yeah, now, now you see, you know, they shoot machine guns on midbusters for crying out loud. Yeah, it's because the movie has no heart. <laughs> or plot. Or plot. But if you take, let's say, that sort of Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of 80s movie, I mean, give me Commando at least. At least he's going after his daughter. There's a heart there in the middle of all the machine guns. 
Predator first. doesn't have any heart. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, Pamela thinks that Commando has a heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's looking for his daughter! I didn't say it was a big, mushy one. It's just a tiny little cinnamon yeah. heart in the middle of the whole thing. It did, at least you didn't say it had a brain. Okay. <laughs> I never said anything about a brain. None <laughs> of those important. movies had a brain. That wasn't the point. <laughs> oh, I agree. I mean, yeah. except First Blood. But... Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, and I agree. It's, 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 it's dumb. It's really dumb. It's, it has no plot. It has no story. It has no heart to drive the story. It's a really bad movie, and I can't understand how it is that the Predator franchise managed to, you know, spawn, you know, one sequel and, well, two sequels, pardon me. And a crossover. And, no. Yeah, and two crossovers. Yeah. And yes. video games, multiple versions, no? Yeah. The games are fun. You can make video games with anything. In Predator, it's easy. It's shooting, so you shoot stuff. I think it, it survived because it evolved. You know, you watch the other ones, they're not as sexist, you know, and the action <laughs> is better, actually. That's true. The one. second one dropped the sexist thing and went to full-on racist against black yeah. people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it evolves. Actually, no, Predator vs. Alien Requiem is actually quite misogynistic. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's an homage to the first one, then, if it goes back to <laughs> sexism. <laughs> homage. <clears throat> Great word. Yeah. All right, let's move on to number two. Pamela, back to you. <sighs> number two pick for... Uh... And I really loved it at the time, mm -hmm. mostly because I was surrounded by children who thought it was great, was Home Improvement. Wow! I know, I know. And I, I guess, I, you know what, it's probably all because of Wilson, this whole secretive, wise neighbor, I don't know. But in retrospect, looking back, what really bugs me about it, and the reason I can't watch it anymore, is that I think it was like the beginning of the man father husband is stupid mm. thing that we see in pop culture these days and it drives me nuts it, as bad as misogyny might be in predator this whole vilification of the man they rendering them completely incapable of doing anything that's the reason that i can't watch it anymore i watched it at the time because it was what you had to do on friday night you had to watch home improvement and everyone thought jonathan taylor thomas was so cute and i lived with teenage girls so that's what happened but yeah no not anymore can't do it yeah, no, you watch that show, and especially now, as a kid, I, I you know, it's like, oh, 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 he's being silly, blah, blah, blah. But you watch it now, and, like, the, the thing that really bugs me, it's, it's sort of in the same vein as you, is, you know, he acts like an idiot, but at the same time, he acts like himself. And then she gets all mad about it every time, gets really judgmental and doesn't trust him and everything. And the more I see it, I'm like, I'm not even that bothered by the fact that he's an idiot. There are idiots out there. I'm bothered by the fact, like, if you hate the fact that he's an idiot this much, why did you marry him? Because you're always having that same fight over and over again. And he's not exactly this sort of duplicitous, subtle guy. You would have known how he is from the third date. Why did you marry this man? Well, it's the stereotype of marriage. That's what they're trying to say. <clears throat> You, you, you don't know what you're marrying, or you do, but you're doing it because you want to beat them up about it for the rest of their natural born lives. At least isn't that what men want to think? Uh, not, not on our wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I had a problem with the show from the beginning. And like, yeah, he's an idiot, he's clumsy. So he has this two time show where the other guy who's actually professional gets you know, crap, and he's like the doofus that gets all the credit. You know, like, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way there to begin with. And yeah, his whole family life thing that was just quite annoying to me. So I, I hated it from the beginning. Yeah, no, it's, it's funny. I'm kind of between you two because I did watch it at first. and But I think within five or seven episodes, even as a kid, I was like, oh, wait, every episode is exactly, exactly the, same. the same. It's the same jokes over and over and over again. And that's what turned me off back then. All right, number two, pick four. I can't believe I used to like that. Nick? The Lord of the Ring trilogy. The Lord of the Ring trilogy. Yeah. Uh, 12 hours of movie. Um, Excruciating hours. I didn't mind the, the, how long they were at the beginning. I really enjoyed The Lord of the Rings, the books, so I, I like what they did with the movies. And then you go back to watch those and they, you know, special effects, they just look like bad video games now. It's And the last movie is just like oh, three hours of a giant battle with, like, Where's my controller? I want to play this. This is ridiculous. This is so boring. Yeah, especially when Legolas sort of jumps in the air on an elephant or whatever, or a mammoth or yeah. whatever. Ugh. I'm surprised you're using the Lord of the Rings trilogy for this particular um, episode because I saw Return of the King with you. Huh? And we were both making fun of it while the movie was taking place. <laughs> there were funny things in it. Like, you know, the ghosts were completely ridiculous. <laughs> but... Um, 
as a whole, I thought it was it was a good movie. I, I enjoyed the fighting scenes. Okay, at one point, yeah, okay, enough, enough. I'm sorry, the fighting scene. The fighting scene, yeah. It lasted two hours, but it was one scene. <laughs> There's a pause in the middle where you know they explain that the plan, and Legolas says it's it's a diversion. And we laughed at that line for like <laughs> days afterwards, but. Um, I enjoyed it walking out, and it's like I rewatched it afterwards, and it's like yeah, this, this is still pretty good. This is fun, you know. You pause it once in a while when you're sick of the battle. You do something else for an hour, and you go back and you continue the battle. And, you know, <laughs> it's all good. But you watch it again now, and it's like you know, I, I need a remote to play this. This is this is boring. This is bad. It's the movie that never ends. But I take a very unpopular position on these. I watched them because I had to. Oh. Because it, oh, the Lord of the Rings movies, and everyone's talking about them, and I figured I may as well be educated so that I could trash them, you know, with a purpose. But they're based on a series of books that most geeks seem to exalt as the be-all and end-all, and I cannot stand. And therefore, the movies never did anything for me. Right on, sister. I'm with you all about the books, by the way, and, and the movies, but the books as in particular, they are revered as great pieces of fiction. But you know what I found about people who revere it as a great piece of fiction? Most of them, not all, but most of them do not read it in full. You know, they skip over the songs. And like, if, if yeah. you're an avid reader yeah. like Pam and I are, are yes. uh, you don't skip over that stuff. And it's like, this: the pacing just becomes all off. And it's just an excruciating experience of like, chapter 10. Let's describe the tower for 20 pages. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to get through them. I invariably end up putting it down about a third of the way through and saying, okay, well, maybe I'll try again in 10 years and I'll understand what everyone's talking about. Mm -hmm. I think they're they're kind of like the beginning of the, the Dungeons and Dragon thing, so yeah. that's why that's why they're mostly revered. I, I, honestly, I, I I like the books, mm -hmm. and yeah, I skip the damn songs. <laughs> 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 so what about you, Dimitri? Number two. My number two pick is uh, a cartoon. It's made by the same people who made Transformers and GI Joe and Gemini holograms and all of that stuff, and it was just ran for five episodes. And back then, I thought it was the saddest thing ever because I wish they had made a full series out of it. But uh, I don't feel that way anymore. It's Inhumanoids, a 1986 TV show about, and people will recognize my interest right away from this. Uh, it's a bunch of scientists who study, you know, the, the, the Earth's crust and all of that, and discover monsters beneath the Earth and end up having to, you know, become superheroes, stopping the demons from coming out. Essentially, they found their gateway to hell. You know? Okay. <clears throat> And the, the demons had their own politics between one another, and they didn't all agree, and the superheroes were discovering a whole new world of supernatural evil and all of that. And I, and I used to think that was the greatest concept ever. I rewatched it again on YouTube, like, you know, part per part yeah. recently, and, uh, oh, wow, <laughs> that's, that did not age well. It's... What part of it didn't age well? It was still during the era where cartoons hadn't quite figured out how many pages of script work in animation. Because what happened is that, uh, for those of you who are, who are not familiar with uh, screenwriting, it's, it's one page per minute. It's what it is for live action. Not sitcoms, but the other. And uh, they tried that at first when they made cartoons and didn't, because they didn't realize that cartoons sort of move a little bit quicker, you know, because there's no acting pauses and all of these details are sort of lost. Okay. So you ended up with something like the original Spider-Man cartoon. Where... Oh, <laughs> oh, now I understand. Never having seen it, I understand completely. You know, yeah. These big long bits of like Spider-Man just going across a, some background. <laughs> with the classic music there. <laughs> dur, 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 dur. Now, they corrected that right away by sort of going, oh, we need more pages. And they doubled the number of pages, which is way too much. And you end up with cartoons like in Humanoids, where everybody's talking super fast while shooting guns and running. And <laughs> yeah. There's no break. It's crazy your head explodes it's insane didn't didn't G. I. joe make it work though they had way too long of stuff and that still, they still managed to make something work out of that didn't they, they uh, yeah i mean you watch the gi joe cartoons i mean they, they still suffer from yeah. that but i agree that there's there's a semblance of a through line going <laughs> on and your uh, head doesn't explode some of that stuff i don't want to rewatch because i'd rather remember that i liked it mm. instead of realizing that i was an idiot all right, your number one pick, Pamela Fourth. I actually, I, like. I actually, I'm afraid to say it because I'm so ashamed of how much I liked Lois and Clark. I like the first two seasons. Good. I, but I've tried to watch it again. It comes up randomly on book television, and 
I, I can't believe I ever wanted to look like Terry Hatcher or thought that Dean Cain was actually good looking. Terry or that Hatcher's they had... Hot. What's wrong with you? I know, he's not. No, he's, Terry Hatcher's Terry Hatcher is not. No, she's, she's skinny and witchy and her lips are too big and she, her eyes are too close together and she's not a nice person. Even right. if Lois Lane is supposed to be a nice person, you don't get any warm out of Terry Hatcher at all. Mm. They have no chemistry between them. The storylines are lame. I, do, I can't, but I was obsessed when it was on. We had to watch it every Sunday night. And I mean, when we, they were leading up to the wedding that wasn't or ended up happening in the clouds or whatever it was that happened in the, was it the fourth season, I got the comic book and bought every magazine. I was completely obsessed, and now I'm very ashamed. I must hang my head. Dean Kane. Uh, Dean Kane is possibly the second worst Superman. Who would be the first? Tom Welling. Well, <laughs> uh, sorry. Smallville's not old enough for me to hate it yet. Ask me again in five years. Tom Welling is fine as a teenager. He's just not good as Superman. As Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so stuck up. And everybody goes, like, oh, but Superman's supposed to be stuck up. No, he's supposed to be wholesome. It's not the same not thing. Not the same thing. Good point. I don't particularly think Christopher Reeve was that great as Superman myself. What? What? All right, let's, 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 let's uh, throw down the gauntlet. What do you mean? I, I guess maybe just because the movies were kind of wooden and the effects were horrible. While I, I hold Christopher Reeve as a beloved character, his, his incarnation as Superman, he wasn't that great. I don't think we've had a good Superman yet. Really? Yeah. Not one that's actually true to who Superman is in the comic book, anyway. Oh, that's true. If you want to be a true geek okay. about it. I mean, he was kind of a... skinny and kind of, uh, I don't know, lacking a little bit in humor. But he was warm enough, I guess. Well, that's, that's what I like about Christopher Reeve's Superman is that he captured that warmth, mm -hmm. that that sort of aspect of Superman as this loving protector. True enough. And yeah. that's what I like about him. Yeah, I did not see that in Kane. No, <laughs> no, he's smarmy. I was completely hot for the guy in my 20s, and he's actually kind of oily and greasy and not particularly likable. Wait, do you think maybe that's why you were attracted to him? <laughs> <laughs> Are we making comments about my taste in men now, Dimitri? Really? <laughs> Ew, moving on. Number one pick for things that you can't believe you liked. Nick. Well, also kind of a superhero thing. Uh, I used to watch, every time it was on, Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. <laughs> uh, Kevin Sorbo and uh, that guy that plays Yolas, I keep forgetting <laughs> your name, Michael Hurst. Plays Yolas, his sidekick. And I thought it was a great series. And uh, you rewatch it now, I was like, wow, this is just bad. The fighting looks fakey. The dialogue is completely stupid. The effects are bad. The costumes are don't even look right it is horrible mm. this is the problem though with trying to judge these things in retrospect is that at the time we wouldn't have noticed we only notice now because technology and effects have progressed so much that are we being unfair to these shows by judging them by their lame special effects well there's also our age as well true changed. yeah it's true people tend to get older with time <laughs> oh, shocking <wow. laughs> i remember enjoying hercules simply because i had been a mythology freak since I was seven, so the idea that they were bringing any of these stories to the TV made me happy. I, I didn't pay attention to the Me rest too, of it. but they just they didn't follow the mythology at all, so it was, yeah, well. it was kind of annoying to me. And, and, but I, I'm going to say about Hercules, and I don't think, you know, the passage of time, technology, and whatnot being necessarily a real issue because I like Xena. I still like Xena. Uh, I watch Xena and I watch it with the idea that it was made when it was made with the budget that it had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the stories are still entertaining. I, I think uh, Xena as a character and certainly the actress portraying her, yeah. Miss Lois, is more charismatic than uh, Kevin Sorbo's Hercules. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's much more compelling because she's a much more uh, compromised character than Hercules ever was. So it's a lot more interesting to watch. Well, maybe it's because she could be more compromised. If you wanted to follow any of the mythology, you couldn't compromise Hercules at all. That's true, but they didn't follow mythology. They changed him completely. It's just that he's a half-god, so you need those super massive enemies for him to, you know, to fight. Or else it's, it's you no, know, he's fighting a human. All right, he's just going to, you know, flick him and the guy's going to die. Xena, you could do more interesting stories, like you said, because she was fighting humans and, you know different motivations, different stuff. It was a lot more interesting. So yeah. we should be happy that Hercules existed, if only that it led to Xena Warrior Princess? I guess so. Yeah. I yeah. think Xena Warrior Princess is a great show. I really do. Yeah. And, you know, back in the day, it was sort of, you know, a milestone because it was a show uh, featuring two homosexual characters. Not that they acknowledged that until, like, 
the last season. True. But I, it, I it just even... kept all the fanboys going, the did, idea did that it even... might happen one day. Did but, they even acknowledge it? I don't remember them acknowledging it at all. No, they did. They okay. did, right in the end. Sort of an way that they did. Okay. But I think I actually like the fact that he sort of put it off for as long as humanly possible and never actually had them interacting sexually, the, even though they interacted as a couple, because mm-hmm. it's it allowed it to be what it is without coming off as fan service. You know what I mean? Okay. Because the yeah. reality is boys, especially fanboys and lesbians, the you know, the immediate reaction would be to objectify them and that's the opposite of what you'd want to do with Xena. Yeah. It gives it credence because it's lesbian fiction that doesn't pander to non lesbians. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> well Hercules? None of that. <laughs> <laughs> well that leads me actually to my number one pick for things I can't believe I like. Uh, I'm gonna name two porn stars here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was interested before that was going. Continue. Yeah, no, I'm actually going to go with another movie, a 1982 movie starring Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy. Most of you have probably guessed what I'm talking about. I'm talking about 48 Hours and its sequel, Another 48 Hours, which is a great sequel name, granted. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, you know, as you know, as, as a kid, I saw it as an action flick and it was sort of compelling because Eddie Murphy is such a charismatic figure and he was playing with a great street man, Nick Nolte, because he's also a great actor. Watching it again, though, it's all about this lovely curmudgeon guy who happens to be the biggest bigot in cinema <laughs> history. He spends the entire time putting down Eddie Murphy for being an N-word and, and, and calling him, like, anything from Porch Monkey to whatever. Like, oh, it's, my God. It's, it's, it's really? awful. It's so racist. 1982? It was... Definitely bordering on completely unacceptable at that point. And it's it's all played like all oh, this charming curmudgeon. It's like no, he's a region. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's all in the family all over again. Uh, Archie Bunker was not much less of a bigot. No, that is true. I know nothing about forty hours, so maybe if you talk <laughs> about porn, I could actually try to talk a little bit too. Okay, well Tara Patrick. <laughs> yeah. I used to think she was quite attractive. But I look at her again. Okay, granted, like, the the franken booby job doesn't help. It forces me to sort of have to look up a little bit. I think I'm leaving now, gentlemen. <laughs> but her face is awkward and weird, is what I'm saying. Oh, yes, because it's the face you're looking at when you're well, watching Well, not a chance franken yeah, exactly. That's where I'm looking. <laughs> and, and, and she's such a bad actress. It's so bad. Porn. I, I don't know. When I go to for porn, I don't care about the acting really, as long as. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. What's like, your voice range when she's faking it? That's really more the question. But but that's what I'm talking about when the, with the acting. It's like I do not believe her at all. Okay. Okay then. I think I liked it more back when you know, you know, didn't have much sex. I didn't. I didn't realize because presumably all my girlfriends faked. Presumably. <laughs> <laughs> right on that note. <laughs> <laughs> Comment. Want to tell us about your uh, most disappointing porn star or movie or things you can't believe you liked? You can mail us at mail at idiomanic.com or uh, post a comment uh, right below the episode at idiomanic.com. And until then, we will see you next time. That sentence doesn't even make any sense. You'll hear us later. Yes, it's true. We do not actually have cameras <laughs> in your home. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not something that is. Wow.